betting on a game. No woman's gonna tell us what to do. And I've been over here just drinking beer and making that noise. Baby, I'm hanging with the fellas, bussing with the boys. Bro. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Bustin' with the Boys. This is episode 254, correct? Yes, sir. 254. We got a whole slew of things for you guys today. We have a uh, a jumbled up, put together, good, bad, ugly, to be honest with you. I didn't do a whole, uh, whole lot of putting that whole thing together. Compton, obviously, is writing in his notes right now. But one thing that is going to be tried and true and always on this show, as long as they're willing to partner with us, is the Chevy Silverado dude. And there's a new family with Unstoppable Grit, and they are the official partners mm. of Bustin' with the Boys, and that is the Chevy Silverado ZR2 family. The first ever Silverado Heavy Duty ZR2 joins the franchise to make the Chevy ZR2 the only truck brand with a full line of trucks ready for wherever your off-road adventure takes you with exclusive Multimatic DSSV dampers, rugged mud terrain tires, and up to 14 available camera views. The Chevy Silverado ZR2 and Silverado HD ZR2, a family with a commanding and unstoppable grit. Head over to Chevy.com and check out Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s, the official truck sponsor of Bustin' with the Boys. Here's what I'll say about Chevy, dude. Anytime I go to a dealership, anytime I have a problem and I'm in a Chevy dealership, the customer service is incredible. They're willing to help you. It's like it's their first day trying to grab a sale. Why do I say that? Not the gas, the Chevy Silverado, although it is an amazing vehicle, but the people, the men. Chevy Silverado is a vehicle for rugged, blue-collar men, salt-of-the-earth people, the people from Nebraska, the Missouris, the Cave Creek, Arizonas, those types of cats. Those are the people. Now, here's the issue. A lot of times, these big tough guys these strong guys know about tools. They know about parts. They know about sizings of things. And I am not handy. I'm a domesticated cat, Will. You know that. Mm -hmm. You speak for I, yourself. I, I, I am yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a task rabbit guy. You want the job done, I'm ordering task rabbit. Right. I go to Lowe's yesterday. <laughs> Nolansville Pike and Lowe's. I walk in there. There's two older gentlemen, salt of the earth cats. Guarantee they drive a Chevy Silverado. And I look at these guys and go, hey, I got this cold tub. It's leaking right now, and I need a screw to put it in there so I can just screw it so the water doesn't come out. Is that okay? Can I? Can we figure that whole thing out? They look at me. They go, what's your name? I go, I need to find a screw to screw up a hole. I go, what size you need? Uh, brother, can one of you just walk me down one of these aisles and help me out? Go try yourself uh, aisle 32, aisle 33. I walk down aisle 32 and aisle 33. I did not know what the hell was going on. I spent 30 minutes looking at the same box <laughs> and all I needed was a damn cap to screw in. So Bruh. what am I saying? Why am I saying that? The only reason why I'm saying that is y'all are awesome. Y you guys know how to fix things. You don't have to hire a task rabbit, but for a guy like me who doesn't know anything next time I show up, dude, be like the Chevy Silverado, be dependable, be reliable, and just help your boy find the damn cap. So my cold tub doesn't leak. Because it was half full this morning. I um look, I uh I empathize with that story because what I feel like I do is I'll walk around and try and figure out what my uh, solution is without asking somebody. I don't know why that is, but I'll walk around until it's like okay, I need help. And almost when I need help, I need the person to be walking down the aisle, kind of next to me, kind of seeing me. You know, I'll like get up mm, on my toes yeah. and reach for something. But, ah, yeah. Arch or they're back like, hey, bit. do you need help? And then I'll be oh, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. I don't go out of my way right at the beginning and ask for help. But it, because I do feel like there's a there's a level of expectation when you walk in a place like Lowe's when they're like, hey, what size screw do you need? And if you give them a certain size, they'll just tell you the aisle and then you'll go down and get it because they assume that you're a man. Yeah. The men are competent enough to walk down these aisles and figure right. it out. I've got in a nice little swing where I'll go to the local Ace Hardware. And I walk right in. The boys kind of know what's up. Okay, uh, Will, what do you need today? I mean, take me to, I need one of them big, I need one of them big fucking brooms that you can push on the concrete. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like, okay, uh, like commercial broom or uh, I think it's just industrial, a broom. Industrial size broom? I think it's just a broom. Is it an industrial size broom? 
push broom, yeah. something like that. Wide, rectangle, yeah. strong bristles. Yeah. Yeah. You push it too far this way, then you start raking yeah. it because the bristles go one way. Yeah. Or yeah. it's like, hey, I I'm need some man. screws. And they're like, do you know what size? And I'm like, I truly have no clue. But if you can't, maybe you show me a few, maybe I'll be able to figure it out. I'll be like, what's a good dependable screw mm -hmm. to go in the, like, the wood of a sauna or something like that? Like, here's a real sturdy one right here. I'll be like, give me a couple of boxes. And if you can find a guy like that at the Ace Hardware, I know the one you're talking about. Yeah. I've been there a handful of times. Very helpful people. Good people, yeah. Yeah. And they get excited about the opportunity to show you this screw. Yeah. This is not the screw you want. Let me tell you why for 15 minutes why this is not the screw you want. Yeah. But this screw yeah. is not as good as this screw. And it's a, it's a whole deal, dude. And I, then one time I asked about a, a small, like, a, I was like, hey, can I just get this drill? And they kind of like, yeah, you could feel the internal, that drill. You want that? Yeah. I was like, honestly, show me whatever. What's the best drill, dude? Like, right. I just want the best drill that can kind of, it's versatile. It's kind of like a Swiss Army knife. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Tools. Uh, I feel you. I empathize with that. It's, it's tough. It's tough being a guy that has no fucking clue how to be a guy. Yeah. Tools, <laughs> guns, knives, glasses are all categories. I think it's really cool to find out what your favorite is and stick to that brand. Like if you're a DeWalt guy. That's all you do, and you're dying on the hill for DeWalt. You like Milwaukee tools? Go ahead and get you Milwaukee tools. But then you got the DeWalt guy being like, hey, Milwaukee, that's too expensive. You get just as much over here. Mm. It's a fun clash of the Titans when it comes to man stuff. Mm. I don't know enough about any of the subjects I said to have a brand. But I'd like to become that yeah. man eventually. Yeah. yeah. Your like daughters get into the potion making of your... No. No. Um, Why does the cold tub sound like it's struggling? Well... <laughs> There's been a couple deals with the cold tub. I have, I will say, I know you guys see my little thing where I put day 15 this morning around 7 a.m. Check that thing off the box. 15 days in a row I've hit the cold tub. 15 days. Three minutes or more. And I know it's kind of late. You put the little thing out there in the bird. But for me, it's like I legit in my head have this level of accountability that I have to get done. Here's, here's the issue with the cold tub. Is the chiller for the cold tub, if it gets below freezing... You should take, you should unplug the chiller and put it somewhere where it's not freezing. And I think that's counterintuitive to having a cold tub. That chiller should be able to withstand the test of time. So I'm out there yesterday unscrewing whole uh, hoses and stuff like that, trying to figure it out. My idiot brain, I go to unplug the chiller from the hose and all of a sudden water starts coming out. I'm looking like, this is crazy. And the water gets lower in the, in the cold tub. So I figured out pretty quick. <laughs> it's coming out of the cold tub. So I had to go to Lowe's. I was at a, a home a home party, a, a home Depot. house swarming party before that. My oldest daughter throws a plate at my youngest daughter. She gets in trouble. They're doing poop jokes all the time. It was a true dad day. Anytime you have your kids all day long and you're getting after it, having a good time, ups and downs, and you're hitting a Lowe's, you're hitting a hardware store, like that's man. I became more of a man yesterday. Yeah. So, so to back to the cold tub, the original question. Yeah. Basically, you remove something and all your water went out and you needed a screw to like put in for the chiller? Yeah. I need a screw to plug up the hole for the chiller. Got you. That's it. Got you. I could I could answer with that, but show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Speaking of show, by the way, Jack was mentioning that people in the comments, I guess, talk about the, my dirty mic. Yeah. On the YouTube, the little fuzzies on it. You want to? I mean, you can. It doesn't look as bad. Um, in person, I got I got a couple on bigger video, ones out. You on, say it looks terrible, uh, Mitch. On video, on video, it looks bad. Dirty boy. Well, it's it, it's, it's from it's, embracing the spook, right? And it? this from yeah. the webs, yeah. yeah. They also that, say your the spit. Same about the bottom of your shoes, Taylor. Whenever you put them on the table, they <laughs> hate that because they're filthy. <laughs> and What's you can going, see why is everybody right? bitching and well, complaining? It's the angles of the camera when no, when you zoom in on Will, you can see all the fuzzies on the mic. And I know a lot of people are going to be very happy in the comments. Whenever you put your legs up on the table, Taylor, it goes straight into the main cam, and there's always, like, little items on the bottom of your shoes stuck to it. And when people watch it visually, it is not appealing. Mm. So I'm well, just here fighting the good fight. Where are we, where are we at with society right now? I, maybe, we're maybe, the about? Comments, maybe the comments are, like, a, a suggestion box. Yeah, I guess. Here's an idea. When you see the bottoms of my shoe, point out in the comments how many items you see and what those items might be. There's a lot of fun <laughs> things down there. Let's take lemons and turn them into lemonade, folks. Let's not just bitch and complain the whole time. I love you guys being in the comments. I love you guys doing all that. But let's pick the battles a little bit. Like, you got a dirty mic? Who cares? I got dirty shoes? Hey, yeah. Uh, your boy does a lot of walking around. All right? Not everybody can walk. How do you feel now? People in wheelchairs got clean shoes. Me? I get walking. I get, I get in the dirt. I get in the grass. I rip around everywhere, dude. And I wear the same shoes for a year. That you should, we should be fighting 
our audience on. <laughs> we could just be like, hey, we'll do better. <laughs> we'll do better. So, oh, I'm over here in the trenches right now. I'm over yeah. here just grinding. Like, okay. Hey, we'll we do better, this. but also you guys do better too. Right? We can, there's, there can be common ground, can't there? We can meet in the middle. Speaking of common ground. Hey, does that look better? It looks great. Yeah. It really does. Speaking of common ground, I did, a, I did uh, spend some time this weekend watching film on the Alabama Crimson Tide. It's a good ball club. Some That's tough, a strong ball some, club. Some tough bitches down There's there. Some tough boys down there. All right. Here's what I'll say about Alabama. When it was first announced, myself, knowing from my past traumas of dealing with Alabama, when Alabama was a, a dynasty, when they were real, I got, I was like, damn. Like, I hope that doesn't happen again. Here we go. I've watched the film of USF. I've watched some of these games. Let me tell you right now, if you're a Michigan, Michigan fan watching the show, we've got nothing to worry about. Michigan top to bottom is a better ball club. They're better coached. They're better put together. They're tougher. Ooh. They're stronger. And we're running oh, 34 no. dive right up that ass, brother, at the Rose Bowl, which is why do you home, what, baby. What makes you say better coached? If you look at statistically how we do in the third quarter, I think there's been three points scored on us in the third quarter of the entire season. We've outscored our opponents, I think, over 150 points to three in the third quarter. But what does that tell me? That tells me when you go into halftime, and halftime's a lot longer in college, and you make the halftime adjustments, that is a sign of a great coach squad. When you watch tape of these teams, and you see the DBs get lucky with a swipe when they're trying to break up a pass, as opposed to Michigan putting their hand through, stabbing through the pocket of the receiver, the vice tackles, the angles at both hips. We're looking, we're looking good. Y'all got athletes. We're tougher, we're stronger, and we're just built different up north. I will say that I think Michigan might actually win this game by double digits. What'd you say, Mitch? I've already bet. I've already bet on the win last championship. I did that last uh, last you, time. I was bet on the, the game now. I'm talking about. I have no money bad. in my account right now. And I'll be honest with you guys. Things have been tough lately. Okay, you guys see how I'm doing on slips and picks. All right. Yeah, it was, like a, good, it was a good weekend for your boy. Nine and four going into uh, Monday night. That's it. You don't want to talk about Michigan and Alabama? I I know where you stand. You're roll tied all the way. I mean, I'm not roll tied all the way. All the way. Yes, I want you guys to fail. That is very public. Very public information. Yeah. I just Makes think us stronger. saying that we're better coached, we're, you know, we're talking about Nick Saban here. Yeah. I know we're talking about Jim Harbaugh, both elite coaches, but we're talking about, Al, you don't think Alabama, like the film you watch is UCF, USF? If this is the 10s, if this is 2010s, like Taylor, they just if beat. this is the 2010s, um, that's a well-coached football team. Now I think Nick Saban's getting a little older. He's getting a little more complacent. Mm. He's, not, he's not devils in the he's details. He's wiser. Much. Like, look, you you look at the Sam. you look at the Georgia game. I love Nick Saban. I think he's a stud. I think he's also. I think Jim Harbaugh and his his squad, his assistant coaches, are coaching better technique out there right now. If you look at the uh, opening of the Georgia game, Georgia put it up their ass in the first drive, to where I was like, okay, maybe Georgia is going to handle business here. But the adapting, the making, the adjustments, the keeping your poise, and coming out and rolling out what. A few unanswered scores against Georgia, and Georgia didn't score again until what the fourth quarter, maybe. I mean, this is a these boys play. will be ready to play. Alabama will be ready to play, and the win by double digits. There's no chance, man. I mean, there's a chance, that's, but nope, that's you go ahead and finish that sentence right there, brother. We're good now. We're good. Go ahead and clip this, Dave Abloff. Go ahead and clip this. Send it to the boys. You're right. So you're essentially trying to rewrite the fear that you had from when you no. first saw the video. I've been, I've been clear about the situation the whole time. I said it last week. I don't it. think you have been clear. I think it's uh, been fuzzy. I have. I, I said at first I had a moment because my own past trauma is dealing with Alabama. Mm -hmm. Listen to Derrick Henry's ass every single fucking week uh, in 2017, 2016. Uh, every year they're all there talking shit. Alabama's the best. This, that, and the other. I get a little nervous, but... I go watch the film, and I said last week there's going to become a time where I become confident. I become I start to understand that Michigan's built different. We've been in the we've been in the playoffs two years in a row. Hasn't gone our way. What's the old phrase? Third time's the charm. We're running shit this year. We're running it. We're winning the national championship. Go ahead. I was going to say 
you got the moment, but then you all, and then you also continued to double down by saying Mike Tyson fear is healthy, fear is yeah. this. You let, you ran with that for weeks. So I am saying you're course correcting right now, saying now you're now you're as confident as ever. There's no need to fear the Crimson Tide. I think there. I think we're in a good place right now. Michigan Wolverines are in a great place, and we're going to win the national championship. Okay. And nothing's going to make me happier than after G and I fly back. I don't know if G's going to make it back. Or whatever you won't, you probably won't even talk to me. We you, you, we'll you, to you, wanna. you and G, it gets a little, it gets a little dicey when yeah, you guys talk. I, I mean, Michigan. I, I think we can figure out feels who a gets personal, a little more. Feels a little. I, I haven't gotten personal with G at all. Are you guys gonna bet on it? No. You, you want to bet on it, G? Do you want to yeah. do it now, or do you want to wait till closer? Well, if you have an idea of something, I, I've, I don't. More, have I'm, an I'm idea. fielding calls. Yeah, yeah, we should, we should definitely. Take, I don't have an idea. Take suggestions. All right. Loser gets a tattoo of the team's logo. Oh my. Goodness, you guys are tattoo that would guys. Be so wild. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm confident. I'll do that. I didn't. Property that. of Alabama, 2023. I'm. I will say I'm not getting that tattoo. <laughs> Someone's a little more scared than me. Uh -oh. You would do property of Alabama logo, 2023. I would, I, I would get the. I would get some sort of Alabama logo if Michigan lost. I'm asking that one specifically. Property I think that, of. I think that's hey, a fun one. one. I think risking that ever is a bad look. You don't want to do that. Property of. You do not want to do that. I, I will say, uh, yeah, I get I get an Alabama A somewhere in my body, but they're not going to lose. I'm super confident. The bottom of your foot. <laughs> okay. You're saying what? Not really. Property of the Crimson Tide? Property of Nick Saban. Ooh. Loser has to get the coach tattoo. Why don't you just get the 19? Huh? 19 for what? The amount of national championships we'll have after this year. <laughs> oh shit! I'll get nineteen. That's way you too get, easy. You get Michigan is my daddy. Don't do that, Gary. Well, no, that would never. Bad. It was a great. Oh, what do you, so you don't want to do a tattoo? It sounds like I'm I'm on board for the idea of a tattoo, but you're not into it. Well, hey, we'll weigh suggestions here. We'll, we'll you know this yeah, can. I mean, we'll, don't think about it. We'll be on the show right for a while. Yeah, drop the comments. Uh -huh. I will say that I, I will say I could sense the fear in G because I did something last week with a with a dap up, and I swooped him. I hit him with the high school gotcha bitch, and you got real sensitive on that, right? I did. Probably overreacted. Yeah, I I I would like to just say that I can't stoop down to such a childish level when you do that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I got to be the bigger guy. Right. So getting getting real mad is is the less childish way to do that. Exactly. Gotcha. Just playing making with, sure with my rings, you're I feel awkward. Making sure you're in a good place. And I, I'm just glad you feel a little more comfortable this week after your daddy Dave. I had to go watch. Like, I had to go watch the film. Talk. Yeah, yeah. You and Dave had to. Daddy talk. Dave, listen. Dave, Dave's out here acting like, like we haven't. The you got to look at history. You got to look at the last two years of the playoffs and understand. Like, yeah, this is the next boss for Michigan to defeat. They haven't done look that. At history. We all knew Michigan was going to win the Big Ten. Did we not? Yes, we did. You want him to lose? Me. I don't want to be brought. We all this. knew, Mitch. You knew. <laughs> you knew going to Ohio State. Michigan's probably going to win this game. And they're probably going to win the Big Ten championship. This is a new box. <laughs> no, I know. No, I know. That's all right. <laughs> Dave acting like Dave. That's fine. Dave can do his thing. I like to sit where I'm at. I enjoyed where I was. I think fear is healthy. I've moved on. I've watched the film, and now I'm more comfortable than ever <laughs> that Michigan's going to beat Alabama's ass. That's all. <laughs> hey, regardless of who wins the game or not. Win or lose, you can still go to the game, though, with game time. That is correct. That is correct. Game time is the ticketing app for Bustin' with the Boys and Barstool. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying your tickets. Boys Never should. The next big event. Matter of fact, we did one of our giveaways for our Black Friday. They went to the game this past weekend, Cowboys-Eagles, correct? Correct. Six of them, yeah? Six. Game time app, because we were kind of in a pinch. G jumped on the game time app, found six tickets. Yes, they were pricey, but it's all good, because... Jerry's World is a is an explosive place to be at. But Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Um, what are some of the things you like about the Game Time app experience? Examples. Last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Easy to find and buy tickets to every kind of event in your area. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. So if you're thinking, oh, this is going to be last minute, 30 minutes until we get to this concert, there will be tickets on the Game Time app. Um, find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, all of it, zone deals, everything. Uh, an average of 18% in savings. Take all the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code BUSSIN, B-U-S-S-I-N, for $20 off your first purchase. 
Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code BUSSIN for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Great segue right there, uh, Jack. It was. I'm glad that uh, the squad went. It was. There were six of them, right, for the Black Friday? Yeah, there were six, and they got to witness a pretty good one. They did. And, man, speaking of, yeah. So you want to start where you want to kick off the good, bad, ugly? Yeah, I was actually just working on the that right good. now. The good. The Dallas Cowboys, man, they're rolling. They're rolling. I don't want to. Now it's like, do you get in the area of overhyping them to where they are the uh, center of attention nationally? Because that's when they start to slip. And I kind of like that they're that they're taking care of business. Is it the Cowboys played or playing that good? Or are the Eagles bleeding a little bit? The Eagles are also going through the gauntlet right now. They are. They are playing man juggernaut after juggernaut. It's tough. But in a way, like you look at a team like the Bills, they're playing a little juggernaut of a schedule too, where they're in like a must-win situation. You're seeing them like lift their level uh, of, of competition up. They're playing up to the competition. They're winning these close games. We'll get into that last play or that questionable call here in a minute. Uh, but yeah, the Cowboys are rolling, man. Yeah, Cowboys are moving, dude. And you, you asked the question, should we be putting them up there with the best teams? I think they're the second best team in the NFL. Under the 49ers. Niners? And the 49ers are number one. The thing that is going to hold the Cowboys back is their situational football. And that's the scariest thing for me because when they get in the playoffs, they're going to be in close games. Are they going to be able to handle a two-minute? Are they going to handle a four-minute? Even against Seattle two weeks ago, dude, throwing the ball in that third down in the four-minute situation. Right. Was just, it's just nuts to me. I just don't understand it. It's obviously a coaching thing. But they have so much talent. They really got a shot this year. They really, I think they really have a shot no, to come man. out of the NFC. And they're playing good. Like, they're getting hot at the right time. Right. Because you want to play your best ball in December. Yeah, and then they play the Eagles again, correct? Or they already, no, they already played them once. Got it. Yeah, I mean, they got, who do they play? Can you pull up the rest of their schedule? Eagles, Cowboys. Cowboys. Uh, Cowboys. Because I like the Cowboys. Everybody who's not an Eagles fan, Redskins fan, or Giants fan, probably in some capacity is a Cowboys fan. Bills. It's just cool growing up. Bills. And seeing the Cowboys, seeing the star. Bills, Dolphins, Lions, and Commanders. That's actually a tough last four. Mm -hmm. I think you you win the Commanders one. I think the Bills. You, Bills will be yeah, tough, man. Bills they're playing. Tough. They're playing good ball. There's nothing here that would say that the Cowboys can't win the last four games. Right, like if they Cowboys play up and take care of business in December with this schedule, like they're going to be a tough team in the playoffs. Yeah, because because if you lose a. Bills, Dolphins, like, they're still kind of that blood in the water. To me, like, I got Lions. Lions are kind of sitting on the bad. We can get to them in a minute. But they can beat the Lions. And then, obviously, you handle business against the Commanders going into the playoffs. Yeah, hopefully you're in the position where you're sitting, guys, chilling, getting ready. I think uh, Bills, Bills are playing. But the scariest game of these last four is the Bills for me because they're playing good ball. They have a good win against the Chiefs, a very controversial win against the Chiefs, but a, a win nonetheless. The Dolphins, what's the biggest knock on the Dolphins? They only beat the teams they should beat, the big games. They, they fall apart in. So that, for me, feels like... I love the Dolphins. That should be a fun game. That should be a fun over game for us to root for points. Seeing the Dolphins and the Cowboys... Or the you know, Dolphins and the Cowboys get after it and just putting a shitload of points on the board. Lions, you're right, dude. They dropped two of their last three. I, it's so weird to understand. We talked about it before the show, and I'll let you kind of get into it, but Dan Campbell, the culture, and what they, what they should be doing as opposed to what they are doing right now. Yeah, I got the Lions in the bad. I just feel like... I want to root for the Lions. I love, like, they have a, a, a player-heavy coaching staff. All of their culture stuff seems on point and up to par. Uh, they have the players. They have the talent. Um, they have, like, a stingy – they have, like, a stingy mindset. Like, they kind of have that doggish mentality, like, as a team that you need to have and in the, with each individual. But it's like – I feel like they get into December, and I would have to look at their schedule last year, but I feel like they, they start to fall off later in the year. Like, are they just a dome – Warm weather team. Like, you got golf. He's a California boy. Like, the minute he gets out in the cold weather, the windy city, he starts to – doesn't play well. And am I projecting a little bit because I lost in my fantasy league this year? Yes. And it Which pisses one? me off that I went with Jared Goff over Matt Stafford because I thought Goff is going to get right. He's going to get right. He's got the guys. Amon Ra, David Montgomery, Gibbs, who's a baller, uh, the, the one that – the fantasy league that we're, I think it's year three or year four with this. It right. really pisses me off. That well, you got to look at your fantasy league in our league too. You're playing me this week and you're going to lose again. Yeah. I don't think I looked at that one. Cause I had, my chances were gone after You're down 50 points right now. Yeah. My chances were gone. I don't even think I did any subs this week. 
I think that one I'm just kind of taking because it's a 14 play like three, right? It's a 14 playoff in our league, which I think is insane. Yeah, it's wild. Who said who's the commission? It was Jack. I think he stepped down after a lot of controversy with well, you no, guys. I haven't stepped down because Taylor still has yet to accept that trade. So that's Taylor what I'm saying. Like now. this league is a complete league, wash because a very low integrity league. Some things went on. Okay, don't say that just because it was you're sucking this year. Nah, no, dude, no. I sucks. listen. I'll say. I'll, yeah, yeah, no, you're, yeah. You're, Will's, I'll, a, Will, Will's a September guy in fantasy league, dude. He he gets all the. Say what you guys want to get on. out of being at the focal point of this conversation. I, I, made, I made the decision. It was a very. A lot of bullshit happened with our league. You being the commissioner, a lot. And Taylor going through around happened. the table. One thing that happened. It was a big league. thing, and I and I and I owned up to it, and I stepped down to set the record straight, and then Taylor chose not to go through with what he should have. So I did everything I could. I don't disagree. Power. You got you got to allow us to get to that point. No matter what, we've never been able to talk about this publicly. And I think what that what makes everybody who was uncomfortable. Trade? Jack, for me, who was I trading? Mark Andrews. You were yeah, trading I was Mark trading Andrews. For Mark Andrews. I was trading yeah. for Mark Andrews. He got hurt that night. Yeah. The, the trade, there was a lot of Thursday morning. conversation about Jack saying he was going to avoid the trade. And then once Mark Andrews hurt, he said he wasn't going to avoid the trade. And then I talked him into avoiding the trade. That's what happened. By allowing him Use to drive a new to vehicle their, to your once advantage. a month. You should do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and did all, that's some all. dirty stuff under the table that Jack, now owning up to it, did accept. But he accepted to where he vetoed the trade of you getting Mark Andrews that night. Because it happened at 9.30 in the morning. You, you made him veto it and not go Who through by giving him that. Uh, you're, it was like a... I don't, yeah, it was like a big... Yeah, you are like getting five players. Or no, he few was getting players. three and Delaney was getting two, I believe. Yeah. Or vice versa. Yeah, let me... And so, you know, there was a lot of scuttlebutt going on with the league that we Love needed that this to be under uh, investigation. It got handled behind closed doors outside of the investigation, so it didn't go as public to where now it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of just a wash of a season. Right, wrong, and different. We got we got three other guys in here that are in the league. Do you watch like the season? Because you to that suck. fairly, you're talking to three of the guys who also suck in the league, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm one team. of them. I'm the second seed, and so speak up then. I do feel like it affects you the most. At the end of the day, a commissioner is taking a deal that is a personal, which is personal gain, to like dilute the product. Of the I, league. I've now taken public uh, accountability. Correct, and but the trade down, is still and, not and, accepted. Yes, but I've did, done everything I could on my end. I'm not going to be able to drive this car anymore. I didn't win any more, any less. Taylor is the one who benefited and then chose to disgrace the league with a very low integrity move by not completing the trade. Is there a suspension for next year? I think there needs to be something. You can try. Also a draft pick? Yeah, maybe he loses his first round pick. There's got to be some level of consequence. Yeah, I'll give you guys my last pick. You're not the one in the in the Any spot way you to, guys you're, on the, you're not in the driver's seat right now. I sat here the day after we did the fantasy draft. I walked in, the draft I boys. Know. Here we go. Everybody's like, go. off of the main Will topic. goes, Will goes, I, I, I'll be honest, Taylor. I, I don't like your draft. Like, you're above me or something. Because I take Kamara, who's suspended, Cup, who had a hamstring, because I knew December ball. <laughs> and now what's happening? I won six of my last seven. And it's like, if, if you guys want to... How many came out for the trade? Up, go ahead. Go ahead and punch up. But at the end of the day... Oh, almost put my shoes up, but I'm going to do it for the people in the comments. At the end of the day, boys, like, you want to you wanna be the man, you got to beat the man. I am the man right now. <laughs> Listen, yeah. All I hear, like, I don't disagree with you. All, agreed. <laughs> all I don't hear from you is taking any type of accountability, which ultimately enables the the behavior of why this league is what it is. Let me ask you a question. If I'm, if I am a, a GM on a team and the commissioner who oversees the league allows me to do something, what makes it wrong about me letting that happen for the betterment of my team? If that's not against the rules at the time, because no one said anything about it and I'm using the rules to my advantage, why should I suffer? I don't think it's you who suffers. I think when you're speaking of the league itself, absolutely. You're trying to figure out all the ways you can bend the rules. But I think as far as an individual and with your character is what that's is what suffers. There. Individual as a character? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about individuals and character? We can go back to Beer Olympics and watch you drop that ping pong ball. Hey, look, again, you're 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 rocking asking the, about the, the bracket. I'm um, giving I'm the just, feedback. If you want to make it about yeah, other no, things, if you want to talk about individual character. We can talk about individual character. I have film, video evidence of your character being in question in that situation. Yeah, I uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was hammered. Did not see myself grab another ball. Okay, I, I didn't see myself in the trade. I was hammered. 
<laughs> right, we can all just say let things. me. I'll just play with the ring now. It feels a little. Feels a little different. Hey, we're all good. We're all good. We're having fun. Boys having, having fun. No. Boys having fun. Yeah. But I just, you know, if you want me to do the trade, I, I will. We'll it's look back a, what at the, the end of the day. Was. Uh, the, the playoffs. Upon, the, the playoffs was agreed upon. Once the it went null and void of our deal, and I stepped down as commissioner, the only other thing that had to go forward was you completing the trade, which you chose not to do. Not forgot or. I just haven't know. done it yet. Yeah. Well, this, now it's been a month. It's been a month. A full month. I think it's been twenty one. You look. You're in the playoffs. Well, there are we four teams in the playoffs. This ago. is a league now that will need to. This weekend. Is that a month ago. Just, uh, just It'll let Taylor, be a month this weekend. Let Taylor do whatever he wants to do, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm with you. I'm all with good. you. It all plays out as long as we're all speaking out here and talking about all the situations that went down. Ultimately, let everybody else make their I, opinion. It is my fault at the end of the day. That all of this confusion and combustion. What I need went to on. hear. But Taylor also en enabled this. No, don't. Speak that's for a, that's, that's the Speak thing. For that's what. Yeah, you but should. I, I, I'm the reason that our league has this integrity situation going on. To hope that we can move past it at some point. So the next year, year two, someone else, probably Clump, can be the commissioner that is non-biasy and is not willing to be swayed by money or fast cars like I was. But I, yeah, hope we can move past it at some point. Taylor has I think to the draft. only way is if Taylor if Taylor wins this league, I'm scared that as a whole we yeah, will true. fall. We yeah, will yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah. Taylor has yeah. to draft Kadarius Tony as his first <laughs> next year. Put it like this: that's on the list of shit to get you beat. Like how this is all unfolded this year. Yeah, the way Jack handles himself as a commissioner, I agree with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, Taylor. Let's let's continue into the good. Do you have a uh, good you want to bring yeah, up? Yeah, I got some good. Uh, my fantasy league. That's not in there. Uh, Joe Flacco, 38 years old, Cleveland. Guys out there dicing up the Jacksonville Jaguars. Incredible. We already talked about uh, the Cowboys. Joe, I, I do want to add well. to the Cowboys real quick. Dak Prescott is probably the MVP of this league. <laughs> That's not what. It, what is that? You can't just say. Pro, what does that mean? He's probably going to win the. Fan, he's probably going to win the MVP if he, he keeps playing at the level he's playing. He'll win the MVP this year. He's favored. Uh, he's favored right now. Plus 180 odds. Better than anybody else. The guy's dicing people up. He should he can come back against Seattle when he was down, which they haven't shown in the past. I think he's got a big chance. I think he's going to win the MVP. There's nobody. The next person behind him is Brock Purdy. Yeah, he sucks. No, we've already <laughs> taken that back. Uh, I had a full brawl at this party this weekend with my kids and five of their friends, and I, I won, so and I still got it. And then Vegas this weekend, boys. Me and Jack Vegas back to Vegas this weekend. It's gonna be a hell of a time. UFC. Gonna go to UFC, make a whole bunch of money. What a we should do a giveaway. We should do a big giveaway. Do it. Follow at Taylor One Seventy Seven to see what this giveaway entails. Ooh, but that's my that's my good my my hosh posh hosh posh. Put together, uh, good. I feel good about that. Uh, the round out my good the team workshop last Friday. Yeah. I thought solid, solid for the boys. We were in here for what, like six hours? It felt six, seven hours all day long. Late. Do what? No, you weren't. Yeah, you're really killing yourself about that. It was 1026. Why, why do you, why are you, you it was just 1028? Like, it's, it's something you Started planned. at 1030. You, did you show up at 1028? But, and you're usually a guy that's early. That, like, that's true, but I just feel like you just keep, continue shooting. Yeah, I mean, I just like, it. it's started in Vegas, the Rays, Barcelona, Nashville. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about that. But JP is the ultimate villain of this. Yeah, fucking it does show, build dude. on your resume, you I guess. The villain of this show. Myself. That's why. That's exactly why I'm pissed about it. Because I'm like, again, this. Just What's nuts too? Everything is Everything changed when you went on that podcast. Hey, everything yeah, changed when you went on that podcast. JP, dude. do you know why he was late, or why he showed up basically like on time? If you're on time, you're late. I do know. Do you know? Yeah. Well, what's that's funny is I called him. I called him yeah. after I after I called you. And seeing if he was here, it's like, oh, no, I'm getting a haircut. I'm just thinking, okay, well, hopefully it's on the back end type of thing. And when he shows up, I'm thinking, man, what, was your haircut start at 930? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that is, you have been acting different, Mitch. Is there something you want to talk about? That raise, he's getting the new fresh cuts. Yeah, he, and then he's all of a sudden got the mic in front of his face, wants to do an hour and a half podcast with those guys. What's their, what are they called? Two yeah. dimes and a token. Yeah, he's getting it. Yeah. Getting drunk. Yeah. I'll lock, I got to lock back in. Getting drunk on the job. On the job. I'm going to be... We have uh, to go interview Dana White. Hitting the trenches this, the first couple months of 2024 just to get back in good graces. Yeah, just, yeah I'm going to do that water yeah. fast, too. I mean, we were. We were we in should it. all do the water fast together. We were interviewing. We had 
the big thing while we were going out there, yeah, we went out there for Duracell. But I'm just saying, just the, the fact that you Finish him, Will. slammed six shots. Finish him. Hours, just hours before interviewing Dana White. At 10 in the morning. At 10 in the morning was an insane move. I don't think that that's... All right, hey, what do you say? What do you say? He said it was 11.30. That's even worse. Because like it's even closer to... Noon. <laughs> it's even closer to the interview. Which was at one. And you are, like, basically all the roles, like, you've taken on busting with the boys. That was an insane move. We were all very disappointed. <laughs> Taylor is also a key factor in a lot of these situations we're talking about. With the fantasy league, with Mitch's scenario... There's, there is a common denominator. Yeah. They're usually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Mitch knows where he and I stand. Do I? Thin ice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <clearly. laughs> No, nah, dude, you're good with me. I, for real, though, Will, I really don't know. I'll be. I don't know either. Yeah. To round out the good, to keep it as a positive thing, Get uh, going. JP getting engaged. Yeah. And JP getting engaged. <laughs> I know that was on socials, but that was after the episode last week. So I just, for all the thousands that tune in with the boys, JP Millions. is now off the board in a massive hit to Kay Adams. Yeah, she's got to be hurting. She's got to be hurting in a big way. I do want to put this out. Do you guys have a date? Should we just start giving us uns unsolicited advice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go I'm ahead. looking in August right now. Ooh. That's tough. Training camp tour. Open invite. Put it down. Yeah. Are we all invited? Oh, yeah. Open the invite. The whole bus is invited for sure. Let's go. Yeah. Um, hey, do you have hey anybody on the anybody on the bus in your lineup? Uh, as a groomsman, <laughs> nobody on the bus. Yeah, is groomsman, just, just going out there. For, just uh, uh hey, yeah, at yeah. At least we got an invite to your wedding because you know a couple of our old producers got invited to Will's, but yeah, man, that's you know, crazy. It's all good, man. It's good. I so I've been married for so okay. long. I've been in the trenches for so long. If I would have known you boys then, Definitely. you know, you guys probably would have been in it. For, yeah, yes. I would have said, hey, I'm getting engaged. Can you guys be in my wedding? Just want to let you guys know. You guys are 100% invited. But that's character, right? Can we, can we get yeah, hey, the good, JP, the dude. JP? <laughs> talk to us about how, talk yeah. to us about how it went down. I want to know about your emotions, what you guys did. Get it on the knee with those legs shaking. Yeah, I was... Super calm and collected the whole day, which I wasn't thinking I was going to be. And I was telling Will, Brian Peters sent us like 130 questions, probably like last week. And I'm a big question guy. I like to ask the fun ones, like the alien twisted tea question. And uh, paid off. Yeah, yeah paid yeah, off. Big time. And so I told Sitton, I sent her that list. I was like, hey, you write down 10 of these questions on 10 pieces of paper. I'll write down 10 questions on my piece of paper. We'll play 20 questions. Very on brand. My mom, when I tell her this, she's like, oh, she's going to know. It's too obvious. I'm like, this is not the energy I need right now, mom. I'm, it's I'm, the worst. I'm six hours out. Yeah. And uh, it's also our anniversary. It's on a Tuesday, so I'm definitely not thinking she's expecting it. We go down to Franklin. Culicino's is the name of the uh, Italian restaurant that you wanted to know Damn, about. Yeah, I just want to go. And it was fire. And, like, I'm super hungry when we get down there. Halfway through... I like remember why I'm down there and just lose my appetite immediately. So I just like stop eating a little bit, start thinking about it all, start feeling the ring in my pocket. I'm like, I, I, we got to get out of here. <gasps> this yes, does. dude. We're on like question 18. The idea was it would be my last question, mm -hmm. but we dinner finished up faster. We're walking downtown and there's the Christmas tree in downtown Franklin. Literally, it's a ghost town down there, except for two people right by the tree. And I wasn't too like hung up on if somebody was needed to be there to photograph it or take a video. Uh, Cause I kind of like the, the intimacy of it. And, uh, but they were there. So I was like, I might as well just like have them capture this. So sitting there walking by the tree, I'm like, Hey, we should get a photo for our anniversary. And she's like, yeah, I was like, I'll go ask them. So I walk over to them kind of loud. I'm like, Hey, you guys mind taking a photo for our anniversary? They're like, Oh yeah, sure. And then I swipe my phone over to the video. I'm like, actually take a video. I'm about to propose. And this girl, she understood the assignment so well. And I get back over. I'm like, and as I'm walking back to sit and I'm thinking, all right, do I just get on my knee right now? Do I fake a photo? Because she's, I think she's recording right now. And so I like fake the photo. She's like, all right, one, two, three. 
And I was like, oh, and actually sitting for my, for my last question, wasn't my last question, but for my last question, got that on the knee, will you marry me? She says, yeah, I'm shaking down there. I like stand up, accidentally close the ring box. It's super loud because those freaking hinges are tight. Yeah. yeah. That thing said, I was like, oh my God. And um, so like, I'm trying to put the ring on her. My hand is shaking like crazy. I'm looking at the two strangers video and I'm like, sorry guys, like, <laughs> I don't really know what to do. They're like, you're doing great. I'm like, come on, focus one time. And then finally got it on there. We drive back. You know, she's super overwhelmed. She's unwinding. And I had a little surprise party set up at her house. And the back of the bus was there. Some of our uh, Nashville friends were there. Her parents were there who she didn't expect. And so she's like, we have to FaceTime my mom and dad when we get back home. I was like, oh, yeah, Corey and Basil, her two roommates, they're gone. Um, so we'll have, like, the house to ourselves to kind of, like, unwind. And then we walk in. Everybody's there. Big surprise. A lot of fun. Dog. So, yes, man. I guess more backstories. I've known Sin since I was like 16. Always had a crush on her. We never dated. I was in the friend zone forever. And I was telling, I forget who I was telling, but there is officially, officially a beacon of hope for those stuck in the friend zone. So if you guys are in the friend zone, it is possible to get out. <laughs> the good guys can win. The good guys can Let's win. Let's go, dude. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. What, uh, did she cry? No, she didn't cry. She was like, she said, get up, man. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? I die. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why are you shaking? No, nah, uh, she didn't like, she was in shock mainly. And then everything happened so fast afterwards. Like with seeing everybody, mm. we we're both kind of like, just sort of like, yeah, I don't know. It's hard to explain. Yeah. It's a crazy feeling. This might be a question for anybody watching that has not thinking about proposing. How did you figure out the ring size? One of her friends, I asked one of her friends who she was going on a bachelorette with, like, hey, can you look at her, mm, her ring? But it was still too big anyways. So oh, it's hard to figure room? out. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get a reset. It's hard to kind of, like, yeah. navigate. Do you want to get, like, the cut, the, mm -hmm. you know. The diamond process is ridiculous. Nuts. Insane, Nuts. bro. They're like, what do, you, what do you want? I'm like, I always want, like, an oval uh, diamond with a gold band. <laughs> They're like, all right, well, here's this. I'm like, I just told you. <laughs> All I want is the oval diamond with the gold band. <laughs> I just told, I just you, told you. It took me hours. Hey, I, I'm you sure know. though you were you were sweating a bit. You know, being nervous. You know, if you really need when you're sweating. The only thing that wasn't shaking or sweating was JP's armpits, and that is because Duke Cannon. Mm has a collection of holiday products that men actually like. Gives the boys something that they deserve, like a big-ass lump of coal soap from Duke Cannon. Duke Cannon's holiday gifts are made in the USA by humans, not elves. Good. These gifts are going to break the bank. Wait. These gifts aren't going are, to are break, not. break the bank. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. And they make the perfect gift for your boys, your father-in-law, that cousin you barely like, any of them. They got soaps, deodorants, all of it. Mm. Big-ass lump of coal, illegally cut pine, mall Santa's cough syrup. Uh, Rudolph's much deserved nightcap. Oops, all brandy homemade eggnog. Uh, find holiday soaps and gift sets at Target, Walmart, or go to DukeCannon.com. Shout out Duke Cannon for keeping the boy clean, smelling good, and not perspirating. Even nervous. Even nervous. Even no when he was nervous. While he was uh, down on that knee. Yeah. So congratulations, bro. That's, that's, that's awesome. Appreciate yeah. it. That is awesome, dude. And it's good too. Like we're thinking, August not fully getting into the fall. There is a lot of, a lot of talk. Know, there's a lot, a lot of talk. Of chatter on. I would never do that. We're on the bad end of the clips that could be out there on fall weddings. Yeah. It's something that we despise. I think you specifically too. Yeah, big time. <laughs> you should set the trend of a weekday wedding. Tuesday, Wednesday, baby, hump day. <laughs> Low cost, the lowest yeah. cost. Yeah, yeah, get out there, get it done. D location? Have we thought of a location yet? Greenville. All right. All right. 864. Man, where else? Uh, do you have an ordained minister? We are looking for somebody to do it. I am ordained. You know that. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. Will saw me do a wedding one time. Will, tell him about the experience. It was, yeah, he, he did well. Say more nice he things. He the same thing to me. You know, he was, in, he was in the hat for my wedding as well. How just long just was I in that hat? Throw him in the hat. Uh, yeah. Yeah, throw them in the hat. What if I pay you guys? Consideration. Let me do it. <laughs> you pay us? No, I could pay you, but get you a nice gift. I am a great gift giver. Oh, uh, you wouldn't give me a gift otherwise? No, I'm going to get you a gift no matter what. But... <laughs> like, do you want crystal stemware or do you want something you actual want? 
I don't even know what that first thing was. I don't either, but I've seen wedding crashes too many times, not to mention Kristen's crystal stemware when you're talking about weddings. Yeah, I don't know. You're in the hat. Right. You're in the hat. You're in the hat. You just, just gotta wait. Short list short let me interview. Yeah. You're on the short list. Let me interview. Give him a call too. Hey, you've made the short list. We're gonna go through right. this last. I'll FaceTime you. Her yeah. parents will be there. My parents will be right. there. And we can talk. We can do it. I'll do interviews with you, interviews with her, and I'll put together something real nice. Keep it short, say 15 minutes. In and out. That's all we have to say. I can already tell where I'm going, and it's not going to be. I'm not going to get a result list. here. You're on the short list. No, no, they'll tell you. Yeah, yeah, as, yeah, as, as long as your name's in the hat, that's all. Like you're that's just like, oh, I'm do. in the hat. Top five. Yeah. You're top five. Yeah, top five. Already. Do we have? Uh, do you have any more to round out the bad list? Uh, yeah, I have one. Uh, Kyle McCord's lack of character whenever he uh, hitting the transfer portal, like wherever he ends up. Oh, that's it good will kill my list. the culture. What? That's good for my list, uh, Kyle McCord. You're talking about the Ohio State quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You go 11 and 1. You see. And you get in the transfer portal. Like, you've got to be. He sees bigger and better things. He's got to have bad character. Like, he's got to see it through. Like, you don't want to stick around and try to actually have a chance at beating Michigan. That's crazy to me. It's just crazy. It's just tough. I had, I mean, I was going to do more bad. Kyle McCord, to let everybody know, he was a five star recruit, big time ball player. We're talking big time ball stars player. Don't pan out. 11 and 1 at Ohio State. Another five star receiver that he's potentially bringing with to Nebraska. Yeah. They are visiting the Huskers this week. He's so. Mormon, right? Doesn't matter. He's if you like can 29. throw the football, you can catch the football. You got a place on the squad with the Huskers as we're building this culture to get back to, go to Nebraska. I think that they go to Nebraska. That's just what I think. And I'm hopeful. I'm optimistic. You want him. Yeah, absolutely. You wouldn't want the Oregon State quarterback or the Washington State quarterback or the UCLA quarterback? Yeah, I want those guys too. Bring them all. We want competition. <laughs> we want Cream will rise to the crop. To... Cream will rise to the top. There it is. There it is, babe. Yeah. Words. We'll take, I want all of them. Anybody yeah. who wants to come to Nebraska, come take a look. We got a lot to offer. Tom McCord goes to Nebraska. Are you not worried about him hurting the culture that Matt no. Rule is trying to instill? What's so, what was, what's, what, what are, what's actual evidence of the culture thing that you're thinking? To him going in the transfer portal. Why is that bad culture? Because you go in the, you go eleven and one. You had the shot at the playoffs, and you're the quarterback of that team, the captain of that team. And you're just going to leave the boys with more eligibility, not thinking about stacking and beating Michigan for the first time, winning a Big Ten championship. You're just going to give up on the boys and leave. That's maybe, crazy. Maybe he thinks there's a, a a better situation. Maybe it's a coach. I'm not saying it's a quarterback coach at all. Yeah. Like maybe it's situational. Like maybe he's just not thinking of I got to beat Michigan type of thing. Yeah, but okay. All right, if that's how you feel, I understand I mean, that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think there's more outside the bubble of Ohio State versus Michigan. Not in the Big Ten. Yeah, I, that's what I'm saying. In, in your shoes, I can understand why you might think it's a culture thing. To me, it's like there's more, there could be greener grass for him. Maybe he's looking at it. Maybe he's weighing his options. And I love that he's weighing his options with the Big Red. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully it doesn't kill the program. Because you guys are taking steps. You're taking incremental steps. You're getting one game better every year. Yeah. Next year, you're going to make a bowl game. Mm -hmm. Year after that, you're going to be above 500. Yeah. Yep. Year after that, you'll be, hey, might go to the Big Ten championship game. Yeah. Go on and so game at a time, yeah. Seven years from now, you guys are going to win a national championship. With, I think it starts with these boys visiting this weekend in Lincoln. It's this weekend? It's this week. Yeah. So you either it's weekend or week. Lincoln. Uh, you know, they need me to. I will let Coach Rule know if you need my services. They are available. The jet. Yeah. I am the ready. Jet. Yeah. I'll do it. do that. Yeah. I'll if they want Nebraska to, to get where they want to go, they need to call Will Compton, fill up the G6, and send his ass over to Lincoln. I'll come too. No. Just to hang out. Why no, not? No, no, no. Because that's, that's a solo mission. That's They want to fly in the closer. Yeah, I just want to be on the plane and hang out. I won't say nothing. Yeah, I, I got you. I'll hang out with Prince. No, you, you, you're too much of a liability with the Michigan, with the Michigan factor going on. Well, no. Why, why would I be a liability? It's your liability. I gotta yeah, get but if you and somehow, but yeah. if you're if you're the I like if I don't view Nebraska as a threat, then I'm not a liability. That's okay. Again, no, I'm not coming at you. I'm just saying I could be. I could help. No, I know, and I'm I'm saying that your help would not be needed. So I can't come on the plane. <laughs> yeah, All right, I can't come I'm on twiddle my ring now. <laughs> yeah. I'd be uncomfortable. Uh, to round up my bad is uh, Rue taking a picture with Santa. It's not, you know, couldn't get her going. But you have, like, arguably the most adorable photo on the internet of all time right before she's about to cry. The one where she's like, <laughs> oh, bro, bro. I picked her up because she was, listen, we, we had a visit to the South Pole. It was not necessarily working out the way we were wanting it to. And I was like, hey, sweetheart, like, you know, give him a shot. Give Black Santa a shot. 
I know we told you about who Santa is. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I'm holding her. I pick her up because she's she's beside herself. And I pick her up. I'm shaking her. I'm like, Rue, Lee, and Dad, Dad. That kind of like gets her like in the in the zone. And I go, hey, I'm going to sit you on Santa's lap. You remember, that's Santa Claus. We want to take a picture with Santa. Yeah. I said, I'm going to sit you on Santa's lap. And we're going to take one picture. A lot of it, a lot of it too, you guys will learn, like set the expectation. We're going to take one photo and daddy's going to come pick you back up. So we're going to take one photo. Okay. Okay. And then you set her down and bless her little heart. She was trying to hold and keep it together. I was like, one photo. Okay, here we go. Take the photo. Take the photo. And she just slowly just breaks. <laughs> and we heard the grab her. I'm like, hey, you did great. You did great. You did great. Uh, but yeah. Where'd you find that Santa? It was, you know, Wednesday at the mall. I think it's the Wednesday Santa. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a, it's just I saw a, that photo. I go, this is the best. Yeah, dude, it was awesome. Ever. Yes, it was awesome. I walked around the corner and I was like, hell yeah. Dude, we got, that is one and thing. I wait to post this. That is one thing we need to talk about. There's too many Santas around. Like my, my oldest is getting a little, like that Santa didn't look the same as the other Santa. I know. I was thinking about that over the weekend. Yes. I agree with you. Because we did Santa photos on Friday, right before we did the, the meeting. And I literally had to rush from that. I was on time, Mitch. And then right after that, literally the next day, we go to like a illumination at the zoo. And we go through this barn. And who's sitting there? A different Santa. What is it called? Zoo illumination. Zoo illumination. Excuse me. Which is awesome, Fire. by the way. Like, have you taken have you taken? No, but that when oh, I was asking, is awesome. it lights? He said, yeah. Is it cool. is so sick. You get some hot cool. cocoa. You walk around. You look at the lights. It's, it's pretty cool. But we go in the barn. There's another Santa there, dude. And then we go to this Wags and Walks charity thing yesterday where they're, they're dishing out puppies, like they're hot cakes, and there's a Santa sitting there. Santa did hit me with the boys as they're going like, oh, Santa, <laughs> nice, Santa fucking yeah. gets it, dog. Santa gets it. Kind of gave me the, went to pull the, pull the, the beard down. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, Santa. This is my daughter. This is Santa, guys. Hey, you know. And Give him he some was merchandise there. For, for Christmas. Yeah, and he uh, he looked way different than the other Santa. And then literally the third Santa went goes, these he looks different than the other Santas. I go, yeah, Santa fluctuates. He's moving around a lot. So he's got a lot of stuff to do. He's got to burn some calories before he goes on the big hunt on December 25th. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's... Big hunt I was success. thinking about it, too, because we did, like, a breakfast with Santa thing on Saturday. And Rue's young enough. Like, right now, she's just scared of Santa. Uh, but I was thinking, like, as they get older, like, you got to start to figure out, hey, we're going to see real Santa once. You got to identify who that guy is. And then the rest, maybe you just kind of say, like, you know... Santa goes around. They have other Santas that take pictures. This isn't the real Santa. Mm -hmm. We'll see the real Santa on, you know, if you do something at your house or if right, you, right, right. whatever the big moment is, you're like, this is Santa for real. Yeah, He's got work. Because I was trying to think like, man, that is a little confusing. I mean, especially oh, your thing. Santa. <laughs> that shit would. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's weird. You know, that's not the real Santa. Do y'all remember how y'all found out Santa was fake? I don't. So, spoiler alert, Santa is not real if there are kids listening. So, maybe we yeah. cut that. This isn't the right program if you're seven watching this right now. <laughs> yeah. Like five -year -old I will say, I was one of those kids who fought, who swung the sword and died on the hill of Santa being real until probably fifth grade. Here's why, which I know is funny. I don't think fifth grade is that long. I think fifth grade, you're, grade it's like you keep it you're quiet. 11. You're like, you could see it being fake. You could see it being real, but you're not ever going to tell your friends, like, I don't know what Santa's coming. Yeah. Because no. I feel like I really came to terms in, like, my first year of middle school, sixth grade. Sixth grade, seventh sixth grade. grade. Yeah, I mean, I was, like, 11. I, I, I remember, like, coming around to, like, okay, maybe I'm on to him. Because here's what my parents did in the beginning. My mom woke me up in the middle of the night. She's like, hey, you want to see? You want to see something? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, Santa's outside. And so we, like, creeped over to the, to the door, and she cracked the door. And so I just saw through the door... My grandpa dressed up as Santa. Obviously, my grandpa, he was, I'm thinking he's sleeping in another room, thinking he's missing out. But my grandpa was dressed up as Santa, but Santa's putting out presents under the tree. And I was, I was young, so it was like one of those moments I vividly remember. So even when I started to question, even third grade, fourth grade, when kids would try and tell me this, I would, I would do this thing where I said, I swear on everything, no crosses count, that Santa is real, and you cannot tell me otherwise because I saw him. Yeah. Like, I'm like, you guys might be right. Like, maybe parents do something, but I swear to God, I saw him with my own eyes, and you can't tell me I didn't. it didn't happen. So that's why I fought until the very end. I fought until the very end, until I think one of my parents just might have alluded, like, because even again, we'd go to Midnight Mass, and you'd come back, and presents would be sitting there, and we had this, this pit bull mix that was kind of like an adopted dog, so it was, like, vicious towards everybody else. So I'm just thinking, how in the fuck? 
is somebody able to come in this house with this dog here? Mm-hmm. And sure enough, it was like Scott, like a really good friend of ours that knew how to work with Buck. His name was Buck. And um, he got past him. But even then, I'd come back from Midnight Mass and be like, and be like man, like, this, this dude is elusive. Like, there really is a sand out there. I don't know how to explain it, but there's something out there. So it was, I thought it was a very good, my parents this crushed dude it. This is elusive. Yeah, my parents crushed it. All the same, my parents yeah, crushed man. it. Yeah, man, that's fucking, I wish I remembered a time like that. I, I remember, like, trying to play it cool and not really knowing, but. <laughs> it's tough, because yeah. people, we be, people would be yelling about it. Yeah, getting mad about it in the cafeteria. Yeah. Like, no, you don't fucking, and the people are just back and forth. I will say we were on the way to zoo elimination. I mean, you just got to believe you're not believing. What y'all laughing about? I, you said you were in like sixth grade. Yeah. I may be misremembering this, but when was the first time you beat off? Seventh. It was around middle school. I was just thinking, you you still believed in Santa at the same time you were beating your meat. It's <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Bro, did I ever... I, I've obviously told a story about me first time jerking off. Did I tell you about how I figured out how to jerk off? Have I ever told that story? Probably. I mean, you started yeah, like they, touching. They don't need it. They don't need it. Started like yeah, touching and rubbing one. it. No, I was, <laughs> I was almost a victim. Of what, <laughs> Santa actually. <laughs> legit. Yeah, it was Christmas. No, they, they, that's a whole different deal. But we're going for uh, zoo illumination or whatever it is, and we're driving. We're talking about Santa, mm-hmm. and Wynn starts talking about one of her classmates that like thinks Santa's not real, and there she's six years old, five years old, they're in kindergarten, and I'm thinking. I got to call their fucking parents. I got to go uh, for real. Like, they, you can't be doing that this early. Yeah. Because if once it's a one piece of doubt, it's only a matter of time before they find out that Santa's not real. Yeah. And that's going to... You know what you got to do? Go down. You got to lift your game. You got to take that as a personal challenge. No, like, do, listen. We do... We, yeah, do you we, need me to call again? Yeah. No. <laughs> God, no. You are not. When? Are you still like, pissing the bed? After next week, <laughs> I'm not talking to you <laughs> until after Christmas. But we literally, we put... We do, like, the big boots... And we walk the boots where they have like, it's like powder, but footprints to and from the chimney. When my kids go to sleep, I watch their Nanit cam until I can see like they're kind of dozing off. And I walk through, take big stomps. And I take jingle, jingle bells and I like walk around the house and you can see them pop up like they know. We put shit out. We do, nice. we do a whole bunch of stuff right now. I think you're still bunch. good then, but yeah, give a little call to the old man of that other child. Here's what, here's what I can do for you. You know that whole Santa outfit I have? Remember what we did with the Titans a long time ago where you were pumping me up? Mm-hmm. I have that Santa outfit. I think to get Rue over her fears because this can last a long time. Let me come over in like March, and then again in May, and just check in with Rue. That way, there's a familiarity in there. And then December hits, and she's like, "Yeah, we're boys." I mean, we're doing another Santa thing with y'all this month. What are we doing? I didn't Santa coming to visit at one of our like our Christmas deal. Oh, I hope not. Are Are you for real? I think so. I, I thought Taylor Dude, was talking about it. I've I I swear to God, my kids have got like seven. Like professional photo, like photographs done with Santa. Yeah, Is bro, I'm thinking, alone? bro, it's, not, it's <laughs> so, definitely yeah. not seven. That's why it's gonna be it's suspicious. Seven, but it's legit three. These kids uh, are never le- gonna go to a grocery store in their lives. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you. We were at a grocery store on Saturday. <laughs> Whole Foods in Green Hills. The Boss. good. The How do you good feel about that. Hey, I, I'm yeah. with that idea. We found our way. <laughs> yeah, I'm with. The, I'm with that idea. You keep kind of, you keep kind of hitting them with the Santa stuff because as Santa was going around, even though she was scared of the. One on Saturday, she's seeing the other little kids engaged. I'm like, see, Santa, happy. He makes people happy. Yeah. He's a good guy. You see all the high fives? You're giving everybody high fives. That's good. He's skipping kind of skipping there. Yeah. the words. Yeah. Santa happy. Yeah. Santa happy. Yeah. Yeah. You cry, daddy's sad. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. yeah, but I was at a grocery store this weekend. <laughs> Fuck yeah, boys. Don't try to take it away from me just yet. You're at the hot bar? I'm about to lose it all. I'm telling you. I'll, I'll, you know what? I'm going to go broke. And then I'll fuck, I'll show you guys. I'll be at the grocery store every week. I might be working there. Who knows, dude? Who knows? Go, uh, let's do the direct TV. Our direct take. Let's throw up, uh, so we can get into this shit to get you beat. I only have one. Uh, and I do have a overly direct take. Do you have one? I can think of one. Uh, all right, boys, we're moving in. O- overly direct take presented by direct TV. Direct TV is the ultimate destination for pro football. It's where fans can get their football fixed this season. Whether you're watching games on live on TV or streaming on the app, direct TV has you covered. No more satellites, no more satellites, boys. You can stream now with direct TV. Stop compromising. Start watching football. Call 1-800 direct TV. My overly direct take. The Broncos win the AFC West this year. 
that's the take we didn't need for it to happen. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right, because they're, they're, they're creeping. But the Chiefs are bleeding a little bit. I texted two Chiefs to come on the show today. <laughs> that's all right. They know where I stand. That's why, you know. It'll be fun to have Pat them had on. to do his thing. Pat had to do his thing and hit the unfollow button on me a long time ago. Uh, my overly direct take is the Houston Texans should sit out C.J. Stroud the rest of the year. You know you've got a stud. Why? Lose games, get a better draft pick. You guys will be much better off as a franchise. <laughs> I'm all in. I'm all in for the tanks now. Hey, what, what I'm all fuck? in for the tanks now, dude. They got a shot to go to the playoffs, yeah? Yeah. They're, yeah. They're well, they're, 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 they're starting to... They're, yeah, they're in the hunt. They're in the hunt. They're third in the AFC South right now. There can be three AFC South teams go to the playoffs. Which was a take by somebody on this podcast. Jags are not that good. They're up and down. They're the up defense and down. is kind of falling apart. Trevor Lawrence, bad ankle. <laughs> What's that? You just said like two or three weeks ago the Jags are legit. <laughs> They're good. Yeah, they're a good ball club. Was, has happened. Or I'm like, oh, maybe not. Taylor's NFL takes have been crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they're crazy. They're crazy. Y'all don't like my takes? <laughs> Sean Payton, not that good a coach. I was. I thought I was Josh right about that Dobbs, too. Starting quarterback in the NFL. Better than starting. Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Still starting. I don't see oh, Kirk crazy. starting. Hey, what a wild win, by the way. Three nothing over the Raiders. That crazy. So, Max Crosby went off. Yeah. yeah the we boy, have two and a half. Boy. Two and a half. Ten total tackles. Bro. Justin Jefferson. That's good because I feel like the uh, the defensive player of the year was getting away from him a little bit. Do what? The defense, like being in the, the hunt for defensive player of the year was kind of getting away from him. Oh, he yeah. Had a couple yeah. weeks where there wasn't that statistically great, and then a couple other guys were having some good good games. How's that for a take? <laughs> <laughs> by the way, shit to get you beat, lining up off sides. Bro. Look, at the end of the day, you, you can't line up off sides. You can't line up off sides. You can't put it into the rest hand. I agree with it. Tony fucking sucks. Whoa. Oh, come on, Those man. Kind of you want me to give? Hey, he's got a family. Jesus he, Christ. He has single-handedly lost the Chiefs two games this year. This is a For the Boys Ooh. podcast. Say it differently. Tony. Mean it, but say it differently. Yeah, say another source said it. Yeah. Don't say you said it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I heard, that, well, from, I heard that from a reliable source. You know who my source is. But he, he has single-handedly lost the Chiefs two games this year. The the ball that went right through his hands against the Lions and was a pick six. First game of the year. And this one. Like, he... Game never comes down to one play. Yeah, come on, man. It's never one play, never one player. Here we go. Mitch, you know that. I do know that, but... You played ball. That, that literally, that play, I get, like, uh, last night, was the reason we lost the game. Because he scored. He literally scored a touchdown on that play. But his toe was on the line, which it shouldn't be, and I agree. It, like, he was lined up, and I don't know how you are that close to the line, and you can't look down and see that you're fucking over the ball. And he doesn't, like, have the wherewithal to be like, oh, I got to back up a little bit. Like, yeah, that is on him completely. It you don't think it's, you don't think the ref shouldn't have called it? I mean, there are, t the, the point where uh, the ref was saying, like, it was so blatant that we can't, I don't agree with that, but like there is some part of a, like being a wide receiver, you have to look in at the ball and see where you're standing at. Like, yes, you check and they'll tell you like back up a little bit, whatever. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're if it's that blatant and you're that close to the ball, like literally like a split end, you need to realize I need to back up. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you. Like to me, it's do what? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you see a lot of that guys. You got to be set. You got to be clear. set for a full second. Yeah. For a full count. Because that's what we were talking about before the show is if this is a two minute drive and the clock is running, this play should have been let, should have been let go, where you just kind of let them do their thing. But the clock wasn't running. Can we play? Is that is that play? That is, it's it's so it's so blatant. I just want to see the pre snap. I agree. That, I agree. Because people are like, oh, you can't call. Then it's like, I mean, they honestly they threw the flag. It's not like they knew the touchdown was going to happen. The flag's already out there, yeah. you know, before the the play unfolds. So the fact that it's like, oh, we're trying to, yeah, bro, that, that was incredible. <laughs> that's that's another why I'm, reason why I'm pissed because that play was so sick. It was that awesome. Was, he, that he just ruined so it. So sick. That, that he play just is, rips it, that dude. Play go down game. like in history. Yeah, cool. yeah, yeah you can't even yeah. see it. I'll probably get by. So wild. 
I mean, he is so in the neutral zone. Like, he's literally almost... And he's looking at If the he ball. was lined up with Vaughn, they'd be touching toes. Yeah. Travis probably just told him right before the play, like, hey, I'm about to catch it. I'm about to throw it to you. Yeah. Be ready. He's like, oh, let's go. You know, Travis, he'll just, he'll he'll just game it up it. out there. Be ready. No, Pat That's was crazy. Yeah, so is Andy Reid. I get it. Definitely a very high emotional moment. So, it, we're, you know, you're, you're definitely yelling at the refs. I know, and just yeah, be like, oh, it's the worst call of all time. Yeah, That's they, just emotional. They, 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 he he yeah. wanted to win that game bad. I didn't feel any type of way about that, though. Like, they were disrespecting yeah. Josh. Or Pat was disrespecting Josh. Uh, yeah, no, it wasn't like that. Like, I feel like Kay was trying to say that on the show this morning. Saying so that. How do you feel about this? Blah, blah, blah. You just said it. Yeah. He's probably trying to get you You know me, it. bro. You know me. I wiggle around everything. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going to get me. Yeah. That, um, that's a shitty play. And it's not the first play a neutral zone situation that the, the Chiefs have gotten fucked for. Patriots a few years ago, AFC Championship. D Ford, right? That's crazy because we were talking about it's like the end of end of the Patriots. That's it. And then <laughs> do it again. And the Patriots win. And you want to talk about Tiki Tac call, the holding call at the end of the game in the Super Bowl this past year. I mean, that was a while. I'll thing. be like the first Chiefs fan to tell you that yes, it was Tiki Tac. Yeah. Come on. But like it's not Correct. If you're, so, so if you say, but that's not like technically, you, what, if you're Tyler? off sides. What do you think? Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Easy. Easy, man. It's like technically, did he grab? Was it a subtle hold? Sure. Technically, is he lined up in the neutral zone? Yes. No, and that's what I said. Like, he is off sides. The, the flag in the Super Bowl was ticky tacky. You have to call it, but it's like, Ooh. I'm more pissed at Tony than the rest. I'm more pissed at Tony oh, than I am. Drive, you don't call that. You let the boys play. Yeah, yeah let the boys figure it out. Because yeah, there's a penalty on it, literally every play. That's where you go, hey, boys will be boys. Let yeah. them go. But that's when you can't sit there and put on the rest and yell down the line of scrimmage, hey, back up, back up. It's like, they don't do that with defensive linemen. Offensive guys already have every part, every part of the game is centric around the offense winning and scoring. So it's like they don't do all that stuff for the defensive guys. Hey, back up. You're in the neutral zone. You know what I mean? It's like you just got to check. Got to check. I don't know. I kinda just, do you want to maybe re, like r adjust that statement before we go on to the, the what part? Tony sucks. Tony is, he has all the talent in the world, but for some reason he cannot put it together. He's just not about it. That's how you say it for the boys right there. That's he's how you like, say it for the you see his routes that he runs, and he's for a second I thought, oh, Mitch is drunk again. Oh, he needs the clip of him being like, Tony sucks, and all of a sudden, oh, whoa! <sighs> That's all we need. His routes are crispy, but he can't catch the ball. What's crazy ball is he can't. caught the ball to put in the end zone that last that play that you're talking about. He sucks. Tyler just fine. I forgot the key third and short. Let's move on to the twisted question. Yeah, yeah, you got something good for us, Mitch. Oh, so you fully decided you're no longer doing this one. No, they, he, this person reached out to me and was like, I'm tired of seeing you getting destroyed. I got you. Was it a text or a tweet? A tweet. Nice. Twisted question brought to you by Twisted Tea, the smoothest hard iced tea out there. Perfect for pool parties, college game days. Keep it twisted with Twisted Tea. Grab a refre refreshing Twisted Tea today. Go ahead, Mitch. You want to give this guy a shout out? You're going to take this one for yourself. I'm going to give the guy a shout-out. I just have to find it. Twisted Tea, hopefully, as everybody's listening to this, they saw a Twisted Tea appearance from our Manning cast. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, if the Titans do what they're supposed to do, right, there right. will be a Twisted Tea appearance. Yeah. Also, um, shit that gets you beat, you see the CEO or founder of uh, Arizona Ice Tea? Yeah. Saying that I Twisted so. Tea sucks, and so I'm going to go ahead and make a better one. He's going to go bankrupt in three years. What's your question? Good luck. Right, this comes from CEO. Tom underscore shoot 13 on Twitter. He says, knowing you aren't going to make the NFL, would you rather be a big star on a smaller, small, Jesus, let me restart. All right. Knowing you aren't making the NFL, would you rather be a big star in a smaller college, like a non-power five school, or an average player at a big college like Bama, Georgia, Michigan, Nebraska, like uh a small, like a, an average player there, knowing you aren't going to make your, the NFL. Two things before we answer that question. Here we go. Mitch is really turning into Bloss. <laughs> he really is. Oh. He's starting to gain those characteristics. Oh. Second thing, he said big school, like Georgia, Alabama, Michigan, Nebraska. What did he not say? I'm not going to say Ohio State because then it just, I'm just meat riding. 
But Ohio State is a big school. It it's is. a big school. You can thrust on top of that if you want to. It's a top 10 school that you claim to be a fan of. Just answer the question. Yeah. <laughs> Floss never got that mad, though. Big star average. Do we get to pick the team? Yeah. I'll be an average player on Alabama. Same. Average player all day. Because you know how many women <laughs> trickle down economics that comes from that? You watch trickle Blue down economics. It's not even close. Give yeah, me it's literally not, it's, I don't know if that's a good one. At Bama, Tennessee, Georgia, any SEC program. And, dude, you're going to have a good time at the end of the day. And not a lot of pressure. If you're that dog at a non-Power 5 school, you lose. There's like 2,300 kids who have a horrible week because of you. Like, yeah. Probably more. Yeah. I mean, I'm just averaging. All the upside, yeah, yeah, no yeah. downside. Yeah. Average guy, you might get that one shot where you make a play. And then, like, you're cemented, sub cemented as a legend there just because you were some classic average white guy yeah. who made a catch. Hold up the ring. <laughs> like doing a project. I know, you know like, the works took I know the grade. like three of these average white guys, which in reality, they're not average athletes. They're, they're just they're white. average to the, the, the what's going on at Alabama. But these guys, I have a dude who has two rings and he played three snaps. Preston Dial and who else? Uh, I don't want to like throw names out yeah, there because we're talking about average white guys. I did want to throw a little jab at Preston sick. right there. Well, I mean, if you played three plays and has two rings, I don't think you're throwing them out there. It's just it, that is what it is. Yeah, look. I'm being the average white guy. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100% <laughs> be the average white guy. Dude, say his name, Jack. It's our boy Mac. Okay, Mac. Shout out to shout out Mac. You got two, two rings. more rings than me. Might have more. Two I rings and still have your knees, brother. Good job. Two more rings and two more knees. Yeah. You good. Would anybody else take the small school? Starve I feel like, I feel like that to be like a JP realm right there. I think that's something you I think Mitch on. would. Mitch hasn't answered yet. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> hey. Bro, we've seen the film. Solid. Yeah, I mean, it was it was nice being a good player at a small school. Like, I wouldn't change it for the world. I don't know if I would want to go to, like, a bigger school and be that average and not play. No, you didn't say that. You said average. Average, well, average ball player. Average. You're playing games. You're, you're, you're in the fight with the boys. Do you, Would you rather have your experience or be at a D1 school your senior year and not see the field at all? I'd rather have my experience 10 out of 10 times. There you go. All right. That's All right. the ball is life, man. That's the D3 football life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, else, what else do we have? I got, I got something. It's a question for JP. Um, we were in Chicago a couple of weeks ago, and you said you had a take about Christmas music. Oh, yeah. And I'd like to bring that back up. My take with Christmas music. This year, I, it's two small things. One of them, Thanksgiving felt like a little earlier this year in November. And then people, I think Christmas music should be for December. Not, no time in November at all. Second, I think artists from all genres are lazy when it comes to their Christmas, when it comes to the Christmas time. We've been listening to the same Christmas songs for my entire life. It seems like my parents were listening to the same songs that I'm listening to. And we can't get an artist to come in here and lay down an original. Something new, something, something different than all the old stuff. I think artists are lazy when it comes to their Christmas music. Mm. And that's my take. When's the last time an original Christmas song came out that was a hit? I tell you what, they do that a good job. True. They do a good job of their Christmas album. Shout out! Is it, is it the podcast that does it? New Heights or is it the Philly, it's the Eagles? My Lotta Johnson and J Jason Kelsey. They call it like a Philly Christmas. Philly Christmas. I mean, it's it's a banger. I always love seeing the content that they have. Yeah, behind it's it really too. good. It was a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who's that? Who's that? Uh, you said My Lotta? Jordan My Lotta. He's Jordan My Lotta. Dude, his voice is insane. Who's the uh, the D tackle from Georgia? Did you hear him? Yeah. Bro, he sounds incredible, yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, so your take is essentially we need more original Christmas music. Yeah, we need updated Christmas music. You don't like the old stuff. It's being overplayed. That's more of a take is I don't, the, the old stuff is washed. Yeah, like well, then, then the take goes to he doesn't like Christmas music. Right, which I, that's, just how, that's how it always turns. It's just like my pumpkin spice thing. The old school Christmas music is washed. Okay. J.P. Hovey. Sure. Washed. If that's what if that's what we need to get the ball rolling for new music, I'll yeah, 
I could stay on that. You just want to see more. You want to see some innovation in the Christmas yeah. space. I, I don't disagree with you. I think there's some voices out there. There's a lot of good voices Ryan. out there. A lot of good yes. opportunity for Zach Bryan. A lot of good opportunity. Chris Stapleton. I mean, that is some more like the, the Western country vibe, but who else? Who else would be? Who else would you think would do really good? Get Gunna on there. Yeah. Just ripping a, a Christmas Del? album. Yeah, Dell. Yeah, Dell would be good. Get Mike on there. Who's that? Uh, that Sam Smith, but doesn't Sam Smith have some Christmas music? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's mostly like covers. Mike, mostly covers? Okay. He's got the voice. Yeah, of an angel. Of an angel. Yeah, someone needs to do that. Hit some new I Christmas. Really music. can't stay. Oh, baby, it's cold outside. Whoa, bro. That's my favorite. I know about that song now. Yeah, I know about it. It's still my favorite. <laughs> what are what are the top three Christmas Christmas songs to y'all? Steer talk. Yeah, we can hit it. Yeah, we can yeah, hit it. We'd, we'd have to take a few minutes. Yeah. We'd have to take a few minutes. You guys want to do a tear talk? Christmas talk? movie or Christmas songs? I don't even know if we want to do this right now, but yeah, we could do it next week and prepare more. Yeah. I won't be on the pod next week. Next week. Oh, and next week is. Yeah, next week is our Christmas podcast. Because the one after that's best of. Yeah. Hey. So we, we were going to have to get the lights on the bus. Maybe we do the tier talk, the list. We could do White Elephant. Oh, yeah. That'd be fun. No, Taylor. Something to think about. Something to think about. We could zoom you in, Taylor, for at least uh, 20 minutes. I think I'll be in the middle of that thing I have to do. Mm. Right around this there. time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go to war, boys. Play some uh, T Grizzly before you go in. Oh, I'm going to play that baby. It's cold outside. That will get me hyped up. That's a bummer. I'm going to miss you, boys. Because we do. It's only next week, and then everybody's gone. <sighs> but we could do the uh, White Elephant stuff on Tuesday when he's here. Yeah. Uh, I DM'd Andrew Huberman this weekend. Did you? Did he DM back? No. How about the How about the Rock? Uh, no. And neither did Joe Rogan. Yeah. So I actually had a big weekend of getting uh, silenced, shooting and missing, shooting and missing. But what was the, what was the Rogan one? I, I said, "Hey, you gonna be in Vegas this next weekend?" He was trying to run a pod without you with Rogan. <laughs> he said, "Hey, I'm available." Did you imagine? Uh, did you imagine? By the dude? way, the Rock. What a massive. That was so big. Massive for the boys. Massive. <laughs> Oh, there comes the hand. <laughs> Dog, you and that hand. He's got to come on the show in 24. Yeah. Got to. I feel, like, to. I feel like it's very much like we're getting there. What, what's our next step? Do we reach out to his people now? Or oh, do we I like... know one of his people. And they got me, they texted me over the weekend and was like, hey, I can get this <laughs> in front of, I will try my best to get this in front of his face before the holidays. But we have to send over, like, you know, all the formal stuff that those people like you to send over. Yeah, at the end of the day, we will go We will go wherever the rock is. We would love to work out in the Iron Paradise. Right. We would love to do it there. But we will, we will go. We will bend the earth to sit down and interview. Do you understand what he just said? We're going to bend the earth to get that done. Because this could be just so much more than a podcast. You're right. Iron Paradise. Wake up. Let's spend a day with the rock and do what he does. The Rama boys. Yes. Get up in the morning. Get simple, after it. You say you do what, Mitch? No, yeah, diet of fuck it meals. This is your, this is, we got the case of the fuck it's. Yeah, massive. All the, all the French Those toast cookies. and yeah. cookies. Oh, cookies, yeah, Sushi. dude. Butter, cookies. What remedy is that? What's he, what's, who makes that for him? Is that him? Trend makes Just gotta it. ask him. We gotta ask him. Evil. But also, if he I came know. to Nashville and actually sat on this bus, that Dog, would be, that'd be insane. clearly iconic. I'm just thinking that we will probably have to go to him and make it work. Right, which is fair. all good. Which Trust fair. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do whatever it takes. I think it'd be a fun, a fun experience, a more fun experience for us to go see him and do some of the things he does and make a day out of it. Maybe, maybe both. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we said, Rock, you come to the bus, we'll, we'll go to the bus and we'll, you know, we'll go. Yeah. We'll get the PJ. You help us. We'll get we'll you back you. home. Yeah. 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 That's big time. Big time. So, yeah. Tell them yes, JP. <laughs> yes, we are. We're in to hang out with The Rock, if you guys are one wondering. One of the most iconic wrestlers of all time. I'm just saying, I know I've went on a lot of those spiels. I know, but go keep going again. It's great. I, I literally was laying, I was going to bed the other night, and I, as the lights were off, TV's off, I sit there and I go, hey, Tay, I wish, uh, I wish so bad I was into wrestling as a kid. <laughs> oh, I, man, these dudes that watch wrestling, you and I think Gillis too. Yeah. Like you guys just sit there and talk about 
It was awesome. I remember this happened. Remember when that happened? I we were at SummerSlam last year, and Derek's giving me like the play by play of who's who and what storylines what. And I'm like, bro, are you? This is yeah. a whole world I missed out on. Yeah, it's insane. Like you, we would buy the pay per views, man. Small town Missouri. It's wrestling. Wrestling. It's football. It's NASCAR. It's Walmart's. It's Walmart. That's what we do, dude. Yeah, bro. Wrestling truly was the best. And playing WWE, uh, Raw, like SmackDown, all those games. Hell in the cell. Oh, my God. Yeah. We'd love to have you. Should we talk about <laughs> <laughs> Should we talk about uh, the shittiest moment? Yeah. Go ahead. Shittiest moments. Uh, yeah. What did you just do? That's all right. Grab the, grab the dude wipes. Right. I'll hold them for you. Damn it. Dude wipes. Drop the TP and pick up dude wipes. The wet, extra large, flushable wipe that clears instead of smears. Wiping wet just cleans better than wiping dry. Get confidently clean with dude wipes that get all the crap toilet paper uh, out of your ass. You can pick up dude wipes on Amazon or Target and Walmart nationwide. Dude wipes. Dude wipes. Shittiest moment for us is more of a little, literal one. Uh, Rue shit, shit in the uh, tub this weekend, man. It was kind of like one of those things we had to get a scooper and figure out how, how do we want to get this out. We scooped it out, mm -hmm. put it into the uh, put it into the toilet. It's gross, but fortunately for me, I was seeing a lot of comments. Everybody was surprised. Taylor won that it took Rue this long. Mm -hmm. Then I was thinking about, I mean, I was like, yeah, I guess if they're like infant, they could just spew out yeah. shit at watery. any moment. Yeah, yeah, watery shit at any Drain moment. Drain the tub, clean the yeah. tub, refill the tub, new bath. The fortune one, those, these were hard. They were healthy shits. And it was more just like, you know, get him out of the tub. It was a, you know. Yeah. Charles, you're going to have to do this. Yeah, my shittiest moment, my shittiest moment uh, is finding out that it took this long for Rue to shit in the tub. It makes me reevaluate my kids. I wonder what's wrong with them. Because I was like, man, are you guys not as developed? What's going on? You guys got to figure it out. So that was a tough moment for me as well, watching you go through that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it was, it was interesting. Like, well, uh, Rue shit in the tub. I was like, fuck. Oh, you weren't up there? No, it was Charles Knight for bath. Nice. Yeah. Smart. Smart. Charles Knight for bath. What? No, it's just funny. The way you put it out on Twitter, it felt like you were in the trenches. <laughs> I mean, I was. You got to go up there. You got to see the shit in the water. Anytime you got to walk upstairs. You got to kind of. Like those quote graphics I do of you with your tweet. Yeah. That, that would have been a perfect one. You not in the bathroom at all. <laughs> downstairs on the couch. Oh, yeah. I'll get uh, what I'll do. I'll get Charles to take a photo of me on the couch. You can redo it. Or not redo it, but you can throw it out there if yeah, we yeah. clip this like that. Good but call. yeah, for everybody wondering, yeah, I was not up. I, it's not like I saw the shit come out of her ass. That would have been a very much more uh, traumatizing moment because uh, yeah, I'm not a. <laughs> yeah. I have my my uh, my youngest does this thing right now where, at night, when I go to take her to the bathroom. She goes pee, and then she waits until the whole entire routine is done. of, And it's literally time to go to bed. And then it's, I got to poop. And then I got to go put her on the toilet after doing the whole routine, pajamas back down, everything. And then I sit on the toilet, and she's like, sit with me. I'm like, no, I've done that too many times. I'm not going to do that, honey. You, it's time for bed. You have to go poop, and we have to go right to bed. And I go sit on the couch in her room and wait. And then she goes and gets the stool, pants around her ankles, and waddles it over. And she goes, come on, daddy. And I'm like, all right, this will make it go faster. Then I got to sit there and she kind of like leans on me and I tickle her back and you hear it coming out. And that's not fun for me. Just yeah. a little, you know. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> it is a nice moment. Not the smell. But yes, kids and shit, dude. It's just a kids weird deal. Kids and shit. My kids are in a phase right now of just loving shit right now too. Like loving talking about peeing and pooping. They think it's the funniest thing in the world. I don't think I know what I'd do if they... Diarrhea in the water. It's a it's a mess. It's a mess. They want to joke about it. Oh, I pooped on daddy's head and they're in the back laughing. <laughs> Y'all want to see hey, some poop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the wind got in big trouble. Got in big trouble. Mommy's putting the hammer down on poop right now. No more potty talk. She got some chips taken away from her today, yesterday. Okay. The world was ending. Just like this show. <laughs> Here's your punishment. A Cleveland steamer right on the chest. Yeah. We got uh, anything else, boys? That was all the ads and all the segments. Good. Fun time. Good, good. Fun time. 
Just the boys being boys. Hanging out, living the dream. Anything? Yeah. Anybody got anything else? Uh, if you want to. Oh, Survivor. I, it's kind of hard to talk about because you guys, we haven't watched. We're recording on Monday. The Monday episode is obviously not out yet. So. Is the finale? I don't want to give any spoilers. We can sit here and talk spoilers. finale be next week? No. So the finale is Wednesday. So as you're listening tomorrow night, the finale is Wednesday at 7 p.m. And then. We are going to be live streaming the reunion of it all where everybody will fi- will know who the winner is because they're breaking it all the way down. And then there's a final three that goes into essentially the live stream. So nobody knows who won. Nobody knows any of that stuff. But all of that is, if you haven't seen it, binge it. Finale comes out Wednesday. Stream right after that. Live stream reunion led by Kelly Keegs. I think it will get very interesting. Yeah, in the live stream. We'll find out in real time who wins. Who are, are all the participants going to be in the same place? All, yeah, all 14. So yeah, you guys, you got to fly somewhere. The jury, somewhere. the finalists, like recapping all of it. So you got to fly somewhere on whatever the reunion is. Yeah, well, I'll be, yeah, that's why I'm oh, leaving on Wednesday. Yeah, it's in Chicago. Got you. Who are you most excited to see either butthead? Who are you personally most excited to see and who are you ex- Excited for them to see each other now that they've seen like the final cut of everything. I think uh, this one's been out there, so I think Kirk and Che, because there's some things that you now learn that Che did in the show uh, that I think will be good. I think uh, like Jerry and Dave will be okay. Jerry and Dave, and also I think there'll be some some New York Chicago vibes, some New York versus Chicago. The well, leaders being KFC, Big Cat. I think the, the, there could be some New York Chicago vibes out there. That's what I'm. That's what I'm interested in. What about Nate and uh, Jeff D. Lowe? Potentially. Nate, Nate, like Nate, Nate has brother argument. It's like I. Right, yeah, Nate. Nate's more of like it's more of like all of his stuff is more of in the for the love of the game versus actual. Stuff, in my opinion, what I think. Oh, and then also, I also think uh, Big Cat and Dave as well. Because Big Dave's the one who got Big Cat. Big Cat now came back around, took a lot of the the win and credit for Jerry getting Dave out, which I think plays into a big, a big schematic, a big web of stuff that hopefully gets brought up on, on, on Wednesday night. Oh, that'll be fun to watch. Be a good time. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, Rico's very much... I mean, Rico can't not be in the content. So he, he's, he's there. The old junkyard dog will be alive and well, leading all the way up to the stream. And then Kirk, now seeing him and Kirk, you know, know with all the chase stuff and everything else, I think it will get interesting for sure, for sure. But no spoilers for the fellas. Thank you. Big hugs, tiny kisses. Subscribe, leave comments, do all the fun stuff. We will see you. Buy our merch. Buy our merch. We will see you next week.